In the last video with direct adjustments, I was able to change without having to erase anything. Let's see. The bright, bright blue and really intensely saturated color. Saturation is the intensity of color. And take it down with hue saturation so it matches those background mountains. It's maybe a little bit more saturated than it. But that really helps with the blending because now I can use that eraser. It's only a 13% soft eraser. And really blend it in just using my mouse. So that it just looks like mist coming off those mountains. It's cold and icy. And I can continue that all the way through. But now that planet in the atmosphere and this cyan kind of atmosphere ridge here looks far too intense and saturated. So then I might go back and play with hue saturation again. So again, the three direct adjustments we use, levels, color balance, and then the last one I'll often use is hue saturation to play with the intensity of the color and sometimes to shift the whole spectrum of color. So saturation is here. I guess take that down. You can see how that's already working more believably. I can also just slightly darken so it all sits down a little bit. And then if I want that cyan to go a different direction or those reds to go a different direction, I can actually push the hue. This is like a color spectrum. And it's a pretty cool effect. It's really fun to animate with. If you just watch me slide it, you'll see the sun change colors in the background. But I can pick the color of this atmosphere. And that fits a lot better with my color scheme. So really playing with these direct adjustments. Kind of dialing them in to really work. I'm going to play with the saturation of that background mountain range too. And darken it a little bit. You can always compare it with what you had before. So all of that's helping it to feel more believably in the same universe. And then I'll use my erasers to transition and blend it all more believably. But I still have some more layers to play with the direct adjustments as my computer's catching up here with my erasing. And next we have something quite colorful and I want it fairly colorful because it's in the foreground or it's moving from the middle ground into the foreground. And I want that sharp contrast and color and clarity in the foreground, but I might want to play with its levels a little bit. So I go to adjustment levels and I play with the midtones. And this is where I want to introduce some of the darks again, especially as it comes into the foreground. I don't think I need to make the brights any brighter. They're pretty darn bright. And I don't think I need to really exaggerate the darks. I don't want to get to black. In Photoshop, if you get to black or white, you've lost pixel definition. 
if something goes solid white or solid black, you can't ever get any variation from that. So we keep it right on the edge, even when we want intense contrast. And now it's going to be fun to play with the color balance. I like all this cyan, but maybe I'll just soften it a little bit, put a little bit more of that red in there. And that helps it echo some of the, the tones in the other layers. And this gets very, very particular. Every little step you make makes a difference. And I'm going to adjust the shadows. And then I'm going to adjust the saturation. So that was a big difference just with color balance from this to this. See how you get the purples in there along with the cyans. And now for hue saturation, I'm going to take the saturation down a tiny bit. And I'm going to darken a little bit overall. So it gets a little moodier because there's a lot of atmosphere on that light. It's not bright sunlight. It's hazy. That's why we have these shadows that are kind of soft edged instead of hard edged. And the more you can study painting and light logic and color theory, the smarter decisions you'll make in your compositing. Okay, lastly, this, a totally weird color. Let's start with levels. Play with the midtones. Oops, I'm on the wrong layer. Your direct adjustments will only affect the layer that you've selected. I'm going to push them just a little bit darker. I'm going to limit the highlights a little bit because this is more of a foreground element. And do I want to darken the shadows? No, in fact, I might even limit the shadows a tiny bit. So not, not a dramatic change in levels, just taking down some of the brightness. Now in color balance, this is really going to be about getting more yellow into it and more red so that it fits the scene. You can see how that dramatically makes, makes it fit better, even though it's still pretty saturated. Play with the highlights, maybe put a little bit more yellow in the highlights, just a tad. A little bit of red. And then the shadows. A little bit more red. A little bit more yellow. When you use the, the adjustments correctly, it can make your photo reference and even the, your own photos just look so much more dimensional. So from that, which looks like it's all flat blues, to this, which has yellows and pinks and, and dark blues and blacks and grays. And it's often good to have warm highlights and cool shadows in color theory. So this is all working a little bit better now. Good time to save, Command S. So now how do I transition it? I'm going to turn off my guides with Command semicolon. And now I'm going to work from the front back and start doing refined edges. And I'm going to use a, a tablet for this so I can be pressure sensitive for scale. I'm going to start erasing, and I'm going to start with a 100% eraser with a 0% hardness edge. I just want to get rid of these hard edges on the bottom. Might leave that little ice flow.
And once I've gotten rid of the hard edge, where I want to get rid of the hard edge, it can be hard to tell sometimes what part is part of what reference. I might actually want a harder edge there. So I can make it look like a chunk of ice. Maybe I took away too much. This is all very subjective. Now I can go to that soft edged eraser and take the opacity way down and then start blending it. So I'm at 23% opacity. And as I blend it, you see how the colors will start to mix as well. And I'll transition one edge into the other. Being careful not to lose my hard edges. So I'm using the stylus so I can be really careful about how close I get to these. Now we've done direct adjustments which affect the whole layer. We can also do what are called tool adjustments, which are dodge, burn, and sponge, which can change the lighting, the saturation, just like a tool in any pixels that we choose. And we'll be using that a lot when we do our creature composite too. It's a great way to create shadows or light sources and highlights somewhere in an image. Now it's easy to get stuck kind of zoomed in, but every once in a while I hit command zero for the full picture, fitting it all on the screen and seeing what it looks like from a distance. And if you need to, if something's lacking, you can always bring in a new component and composite it in. Like this floating ice cube for the extreme foreground can help cover up a transition that's a little awkward. So I'll rasterize it. I'll quick use the magic wand to select all that black and just delete it. It's going to leave little fragments. But it covers up that rough seam here that I don't have an easy transition for because I don't have a lot of good overlap for it. Actually, I do have a lot of good overlap for it, so maybe I don't need that. I just erase away here. All of this was outside of my original sketch but this seems like it will make a better kind of square composition. So I'm feeling empowered to do that. So first I get rid of the hard edge and then I can softly transition as long as I have enough overlap in that ice. my own little iceberg here, cut out its edge. use my eraser 